So we'll go ahead and begin. Um, and we'll ask uh, Ms. Odom if you'll give us one minute to tell us who you are and tell us a little something about yourself. Great. Right. Well, I'm Corey Odom. I currently live here in Chipley. I've lived here since 2002. I've worked in the healthcare field for over 20 years. Uh, I do physical therapy. I'm in the home health setting right now. Um, before that, I was in um, a manager position. I was a manager for over six years. I had a staff of 13 therapists underneath me. I had to manage a huge Medicare budget, uh, part A and part B, that's neither here nor there, but um, reaching goals for my department, um, did HR, I had to handle just about everything. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, that is some of the experience I have to bring with me to the Supervisor of Elections <coughs> Office. Um, I've been reading any bit of information that I can find. Um, I visited different Supervisor Elections offices in our surrounding counties uh, to kind of get an idea of what the day-to-day -day, um, duties are in the Supervisor of Elections Office. Okay, mm -hmm. so we'll begin with the first question. All right. What are three of the most important issues or challenges faced by the Washington County Supervisor of Elections at this time? At this time, I would say the number one um, thing that they're having to face is COVID, the fear of COVID. Um, we all know we have early election coming up, and that means we go to the polls. Um, I know people are afraid. Do I wear a mask? Do I not wear a mask? Um, I believe that early voting, the more days that we can have available, that will help with that because you can have you know, less people at the polls at different times. I think that's number one. Number two is I believe we need more precincts in our area. Um, when we have more precincts, again, that's less people at each area on election day. And thirdly, um, having a plan for backup power for all of our voting precincts to have generators in place. Because hurricane season, that's typically when we elect. And we know what happened with Michael. We had to close some precincts because of, you know, had to move things around because we didn't have power or there was damage. But to make sure that there are backup plans and having generators for each precinct available. So we'll give an additional 30 seconds. Um, <laughs> if you want to add anything else to. If I, if I could suggest, <laughs> I, I don't think we have to adhere to any kind of a time limit. Yeah. Um, I mean, I probably suggest you just I'll allow myself to speak as she would like to give it a third. <laughs> Perfect. So we'll go to question number two. Um, what is the role and job description of a Florida supervisor of elections? Um, it's a big one. Um, you know, going into this, I didn't realize exactly what all the job duties would be, but as I've read and done more research, I understand. Um, number one, the main role is to make sure that you have secure, transparent elections, making sure that you increase the voter confidence in our election system. Um, your duties include, you know, increasing voter registration, you know, helping people by encouraging voter turnout, um, taking this the office to the community, um, you know, being a servant, making it easier and accessible for everyone in our county to be able to vote, register to vote, update your information. Um, also, you know, auditing voter rolls when people move out of our county, people change addresses, people die. You know, these are things that need to be done on a daily basis to ensure that we have vote by mails go out, but they're going to the accurate addresses and to correct people. That way, that helps again help with the accuracy and the security of our voting in our county. And education, sorry, that's a big thing about I forgot. Getting into schools and uh, educating children starting in you know, K through 12, not just high school, starting with the younger ones, explaining to them why we vote, doing mock elections with them, simple as your favorite color, you know, and letting them know that if only two people vote, then you know you think the whole crew wants what these two people know. So explain to them the difference when the whole class votes and if you only count two votes. Explain to them why we vote. And it's our privilege and right. Thank you. Question number three. What is the role of technology in making the Office of Washington County Supervisor of Elections more efficient? <laughs> The technology is available already in our supervisor's office. Uh, they have something called EVID, similar to an iPad. Um, they have them at the voting precincts on election day. Well, those EVIDs have the ability to go into the community with a, a, a Wi-Fi jet pack, I guess you would say, power pack. And they are able to go to the community, into the different precincts, and instead of our residents having to come to the county office, 
to change their registration or even to register, we can go to the county. We can bring it to them. They don't have to come to Chipley. If they're in Sunny Hills, we'll meet them at Sunny Hills you know, on a monthly rotation or a bi-monthly rotation. We can take that technology that we have and better serve our residents. You know, my main thing is let's bring the office to our community instead of the community having to come to the office. And have it at also at festivals, um, you know, the Watermelon Festival, Possum Day, any festivals we have in Washington County, those events are able to, to travel. And you can register not just people from Washington County, but if they're in the state of Florida, they can also register to vote on our equipment that we have as well. Because we know not just Washington County residents attend a lot of our festivals. So it can also reach out to different counties in our area. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The next question. How can technology make the office of Washington County Supervisor of Elections more cost efficient, more productive, and more effective in outreach efforts? Okay. Um, like I said, by going to the precincts, um, you know, on a monthly rotation or bi monthly, either myself or a representative from the office can be there and offer the services, pretty much everything that's there in the office, and even bring the paper copies of the registration if someone is not comfortable putting their information into a computer system. Um, I do a lot of the home health in the Sunny Hills area and a lot of the residents there are not registered to vote. Um, and the reason being is that they are not comfortable putting their information in the computer. You know, security issues, um, they're just not comfortable with it. So by us bringing it to them, whether it's paper or that even, and showing them how secure it is, I think it will number one, increase the amount of voter registration that we have in our area. Um, also, bringing it to the children. Children, are, I think they're born knowing how to work an iPhone. We don't even have to teach them how to do it. They know how to do it. By showing them what we can do and what they can do, and they can help their grandparents or their, their parents show them the things that, that our system can do. Um, also, doing a kid's corner on our website by keeping it updated um, where children can come in, get information that's pertinent to them. Because we all know kids, they get on the internet and what better Thing to have something for them to learn why we vote, our Bill of Rights, you know, how important it is. We have to educate our children for tomorrow. You know, we look at what's going on right now and we see, you know, the consequences of some of the actions of parents, you know, my age that didn't teach their kids right from wrong or to teach them that someone else is going to do it for you. No, we need to teach them to vote and be responsible and so they know what their actions, how they affect the future. Question number five, how can the Washington County Supervisor of Elections make it easier for the residents of Washington County to register and vote? <laughs> kind of like what I just said, <laughs> bringing it to the community. Okay. Um, yeah, the same type of thing. The next question, what is the most important task of the Supervisor of Elections in Washington County? I think, um, by making it secure and increasing, like I said before, the voter confidence in our election system, by being transparent, by inviting the public in to, um, you know, they can, the public is welcome to come watch the canvassing board, you know, educating the public what the canvassing board does. You know, that's something that I was, I didn't know what it was until, you know, I was researching, you know, this office um, when I felt led to run for it and I was trying to get as much information as possible. You know, I didn't know, and I don't think most people know the canvassing board. So they don't even know who are the members of the canvassing board. Um, but just asking questions, um, getting out there, and you know, just offering our community the services that this office was designed to be. It's an office not designed to have people come to it. It is the office is designed to go to the people of our county and to offer any education. You know. I would love to be able to go and talk to different organizations. You know, I plan on being in the schools, um, the nursing homes, the council on aging, civic organizations, anything that I can do to help educate our county to make it a good county where our county really votes and we know what the residents of our county want, not just a handful, but everyone knows that their vote does count. The next question is, the Washington County Supervisor Elections position a full-time job and the second part of that is how many hours are necessary for the supervisor of elections to be in the office um, I believe with my heart that this is a full-time position the salary for this position is mandated by the state it's not set by our county 
Um, it's a public record, anyone can look it up. Um, it should be, the supervisor of elections should be available and accessible through working hours, five days a week. Um, obviously during an election time, you're gonna be there more than your eight or nine hours. You're gonna be there endless hours. Um, you know, in the, the office staff as well. But it is a full-time position that should be, you should be able to walk in the office and know if your supervisor elections is not there, where are they? Are they in meeting? Are they out in the community? Are they at civic events? Are they at the schools educating? Where the supervisor elections is, that person, the elect, that supervisor, the public should be able to walk into the office and if that person is not there, they should be able to know where they are during working hours. There should be a schedule set to where you know and you could walk in and if they're not there, you ask someone else, you know, and they should be able to tell you where that person is during working hours. I think it is a, um, should be accountable to the public because the public is what pays that position, our taxes do. Thank you. The next question. How can the Washington County Supervisor of Elections Office better serve the individual incorporated areas in the county, especially during their uh, respective municipal elections? Um, we've had the pleasure of speaking with um, a couple of city councils, and some of the concerns they've shared with me is the cost that um, the Supervisor of Elections Office has given them to use their equipment and offer their services. So they stopped using the Supervisor of Elections Office for their city elections. Um, that's not right. The people, even in those cities, they pay county taxes. Um, I plan on helping and assisting in any way, um, as much or as little as each city or township would like Supervisor Elections Office to handle, whether it's providing equipment, providing education to their city clerk, um, helping them with the ballots, uh, mobilizing um, equipment, um, offering a poll worker or offering someone on staff at the office to come and assist in those. Um, I really would like to see that happen again because cities are part of our county and as a county position, I think we are to help each city. And, and civic organizations also. Um, I think Westford Electric used to use um, our equipment as well and they no longer do because of the cost that was um, quoted to them. Another question, how can the Washington County Supervisor of Election Office be changed, if at all, to better serve the public? I would say education, like I was saying before. Um, getting in the school system, not just in 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. Our children need to know what voting is, why we vote, and it's a privilege. Um, I know we learn we have civics class, and we have American government, and I, I know we have those classes at our high school. And you guys know, I, mean, I have a 16-year-old, he goes to class and he learns that stuff, but does he really get it? I don't think so. And we know we learn by repetition. So if we start kindergarten, first grade, second grade, with little things, doing the mock elections, and then as they get older, explain the electoral college, you know, why we vote, why it's important, just kind of reiterate over and over and over again. And by the time they're 16, 17, 18, they have a better grasp of, as, a, as an American, the responsibility we have to vote and to let our voice be heard. And also, you know, you can't make a change if you don't let your voice be heard. And, um, and the kids need to know how to do it the right way. You know, unfortunately, they're seeing on TV riots. You know, some of them may think that's the right way. That's not the right way. You know, everyone in this room understands that it's not correct. You know, but by voting and letting your voice be heard and putting people that you want in leadership roles, that's how you can get the, you can, you know, uh, get the results that you desire to have. Education is the big one for me. Does Washington County need additional polling locations? And the second part of that question is how would the supervisor's office fund additional polling locations? Yes, I do believe we need more polling locations. Um, I know with the paving of the roads, a couple of the precincts were taken out. Um, we just That was just unfortunate it happened. Um, but I think if we add more precincts, even in smaller areas, we'll get better turnout. Um, something that is an option, um, different counties in our state do this, it's called adopt the precinct. So you don't have to spend the same amount of money as you would necessarily pay the poll workers that work, but any organization that has a 501c3 can apply for this. And what that means is Project Graduation or um, the ARC Center, any, any organization, nonprofit, they go through the poll worker training, 
and they have, I believe it's nine to 13 people from their organization that runs that polling place. And then what we do is we set a certain amount, whether it's $1,000, 2,000, 500, whatever it is, then that money goes directly to that organization. So not only does it cut down the cost for paying, you know, not paying all the poll workers, but it also allows the more community involvement getting people to see the elections process and seeing how things work, and then the organization of their choice benefits from it as well. And the final question, Ms. Odom, what is the most important job of the Washington County Supervisor of Elections? Um, like I said before, um, you know, getting people to register to vote, making it accessible, and making it easy for them, bringing the office to the public, and ensuring secure elections and increasing our vocal confidence by being transparent, um, you know, by being accountable, um, you know, just being open, you know, letting people know because it, it's our office, you know, someone directs it, but it belongs to the county. You know, we, we pay the commission, um, and it's something, you know, like um, the county commissioners and the school board, you know, you want community involvement and you want people, their input into the office. Um, that's just something, you know, it's very important uh, that we need to do. Thank you, Ms. Odom. You've answered all of our questions, and so we'll leave this, um, we'll, leave, we'll allow space for you to give a close-out mm -hmm. remark. Okay. Um, all right. uh, something I was thinking about is, you know, we live in a crisis today. You know, we have a generation of young people that don't understand what America was founded upon. And the office, more so than most, this office allows direct contact with these kids. We can teach them why we should vote, how we should vote, you know, let them know why we live in America and what a great opportunity and a privilege it is to be here. You know, Washington County is not, by far, is not the largest county, but we have close to 300 graduates each year. If those 300 people understand what it is to vote and they understand their rights and their privilege, you know, that's 300 kids that either stay close to home or they go out in the community, and each person touches another person that touches another person, and they can influence it. So this office has a direct access to helping grow and develop great Americans. You know, we need people in our country right now that believe red, white, and blue and not blunt. You know, this office has the opportunity to help develop people into great Americans that take advantage of the right and the privilege that we have to vote. And I would love to be considered. Um, I would appreciate anyone's support to help me be in that office to help make these things attainable for our youth and for anyone in our community. I believe that's a wrap. Thank you, Mr.